Welcome to our service of worship. And because of the restrictions which don't allow us to gather together in our church buildings to worship, we're trying out something new here at uh, St. John's New London and Kensington Presbyterian Churches in hopes that despite the fact that we can't join together in our church buildings, we can still join together in worshiping God. So we pray that this service might be a blessing to you wherever you are. Let us come together. Let us praise God. In times of uncertainty and in change, we lean faithfully on God. With our questions and our cries, we lean faithfully on God. In our hopes and our expectations, we wait faithfully on God. From different places, we come offering our prayers and our praise in faithfulness. Let us worship the Lord our God together. Let us pray. God, in whom all things are renewed, we praise you. In the face of uncertainty in all times that worry us, we listen for your words of love and for hope. And even in the midst of unprecedented times and circumstances, we thank you that we can still follow the footsteps of Jesus in this Lenten season. Lord, remind us that you stand beside us when we don't know which way to turn. You are there comforting us when we face the unknown. Holy Spirit, help us to trust in your faithfulness, knowing that you are never far from our sorrows or our fears. You walk with us in our times of isolation and loneliness. As we worship, we pray that you'd renew our trust in your resurrection promises and you draw us near to us when we need you the most. God of our lonely places and hard times, your light shines, and despite the darkness, there's no situation beyond your grace-filled reach. Yet we confess we sometimes lose track of you. When sorrows stack up or loneliness surround us, when uncertainty reigns and our routines are broken, when isolation becomes a daily reality and feelings of despair rise, forgive us our hopelessness. Stay with us as we go through our valley of shadow. Bring life where there is death, healing where there is pain, and courage where there is fear. Stay with us as we make our way along the path that Jesus walked. And with repentant hearts we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. This morning, we're reading from Psalm 130, followed by our Old Testament reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Psalm 130, Waiting for D Divine Redemption. This is a reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his hope, word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. And our scripture reading from Ezekiel comes from Ezekiel chapter 37, reading verses 1 to 14. A famous passage of the vision of the valley of dry bones. 
Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. And he said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bones. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and sin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. And then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Today, we talk about God giving and restoring life for us. We're living in very unprecedented times. Across the globe, Nations are struggling to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. Extreme measures are being taken to try to slow down the spread of the virus. Health professionals keep reiterating good personal hygiene and the necessity to wash our hands. The term social distancing has become a part of our everyday vocabulary. Personally, my family and I find ourselves in isolation for 14 days because of our travels abroad for the March break. It's a surreal existence because despite feeling perfectly healthy, we're stuck at home, unable to go about our lives as usual. However, we're hardly alone in our isolation. Even those who haven't traveled, those who don't work, or those who are in jobs or businesses that are deemed non-essential find themselves in a similar boat. Encouraged to stay at home, and to reduce contact with others. The economy has come grinding to a halt as governments around the world are using measures and restrictive laws and powers that are only often reserved for times of war. Businesses, parks, and public spaces are closed. Everyone's excursions are limited to grocery shopping, picking up prescriptions or other essentials. Travel is restricted. Schools are suspended. Our ability to socialize has been greatly affected, including our capacity to worship together. If I wasn't experiencing it, I'd think this was all a dream. Before this outbreak, the draconian rules and laws that are being implemented would have been unimaginable in a country like Canada. But we have these images of deserted streets and large makeshift hospitals and they remind me of scenes from apocalyptic movies events that you'd never think we'd ever experience in real life but this is our new reality 
the events that you'd never think we'd ever experience before. The uncertainty, the helplessness leading to worry, to troubling thoughts. We struggle with the idea of thousands who have lost their lives from the virus, those who may still die from it. We fear for those in our society who are most vulnerable, like our seniors and those who have compromised immune systems. We worry about our friends, our neighbors, those living in assisted living in nursing homes, those living alone at home, those who are on the front lines as healthcare professionals, those whose jobs entail interacting with the public and therefore find themselves at greater risks. We worry about lost incomes and reduced paychecks and the bills that still need to be paid. We're concerned about how long this will go on and if it's going to get better or if it's going to get worse. We're worried about how we're supposed to live our lives given all these restrictions. And given these circumstances, it's hard to see a bright light or a glimmer of hope. Instead, it feels like we're in a world of increasing darkness and isolation. But the prophet Ezekiel knew what it was like living in a strange and restrictive world. The city of Jerusalem had been razed to the ground. The temple had been destroyed. The people of Israel had been taken far from their homes. They'd been exiled to Babylon. They were living in a harsh and an incomprehensible world, a world very different from what they'd known. They grieved for their old lives. It was a period of doubt, hopelessness, depression, fear, anxiety, and despair. They were lost, isolated, and disconnected from each other and from God. They were a lifeless people in a strange land. And I don't know about you, but I'd suggest that surrounded by our new reality, we too find ourselves in a similar situation. This COVID-19 pandemic has turned our world upside down. We may still physically live in the same house or same dwelling. We may still look out the windows and see the same familiar sights. But our world is transformed into something that we can hardly recognize. The restrictions that have been implemented have altered the way in which we are accustomed to living and the freedoms we usually enjoy. Rules put in place to slow down the virus have hampered our ability to gather, to meet, to interact, which has effectively exiled and isolated us. Therefore, although we're separated by thousands of years, there are many similarities between us and the people of Israel who were living in exile. Our Creator never intended for us to live in fear or in isolation. Therefore, to help the people of Israel, God chose a messenger, the prophet Ezekiel, to share his love and promise of new life with them. And God speaks to Ezekiel using a vision, which the prophet describes in this way. The hand of the Lord came upon me. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them, and they were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. God later clarifies who these dry bones represent, saying, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And they say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. The people of Israel have become a shell of themselves, lost and drained of life. However, through God's never-ending love and grace, our Heavenly Father seeks to bring his children out of their dark valley back into the light. In this passage, we see the true power and grace of God. We also see the faith of Ezekiel. God speaks to Ezekiel saying, Mortal, can these bones live? And Ezekiel answers, O Lord God, you know. The prophet believes in the boundless love and power of God. He has faith that God can bring life to the countless bones that scatter the valley floor. And even more, he recognizes and believes that God is willing to breathe life into the bones and to restore them. In response to Ezekiel's faith, God calls on Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. 
Here we see the true power of God, the true mystery of God. As Ezekiel speaks in the name of God, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bones. Ezekiel looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But although the scattered bones had rejoined to create complete skeletons, and the muscle and skin had grown to cover them, we're told the bodies still didn't have life. So as God tells Ezekiel to call upon the Spirit of God to come and fill the lifeless bodies. Ezekiel prophesied as God commanded him, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Just like that, God brought new life to the seemingly dead and dry bones. The Spirit of God creates new life from what appeared to be lifeless by proclaiming, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. The Spirit of God breathed life into a place of death and hopelessness. God's promise to his people is that he will lift them up from their graves and return them to their land. This was God's promise then. And this is God's promise today, because the same spirit that filled and rejuvenated the dry bones and breathed life into the created bodies is the same spirit promised and given to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. When Jesus was preparing to leave this world, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Notice Jesus himself refers to the power of the Holy Spirit. A power that brings life. A power so great that it's beyond our understanding and even beyond our imaginations. A power that's working and moving in this world even when all signs of life look to be gone. This is the power of God. A power that we can turn to in these troubled times. We just need to trust and have faith in our Lord's never-ending love and grace. And this can be difficult, especially when we find ourselves in an ever-changing and uncertain world. The vision of a dry valley filled with bones highlights the fact that our lives aren't always easy. Just because we believe in God doesn't mean that we're immune to hardships, to pain, to suffering. However, Ezekiel shows us that even in dark and seemingly hopeless times, there's a place for faith and trust in God. There's reason for hope. God showed Ezekiel a valley filled with bones. It was an arid wasteland. As far as his eyes could see, everywhere he looked, he saw piles upon piles of dried up bones. It was a place of death, hopelessness, and despair. There's no earthly reason why anyone would look upon such a sight and expect or imagine that life could exist in such a place. But when God asked Ezekiel, mortal, can these bones live? Ezekiel responded with faith in God's love and power. He believes that God can and will do something to bring life back to this valley, even if he's not sure how. And his faith is rewarded as Ezekiel witnesses God's spirit breathing life back into the bones, and a nation is reborn. It's difficult watching the news and having our lives restricted. It's heart-wrenching hearing about the rising death tolls and the numbers of people infected. We're worried for our families, for our friends, our neighbors, even our livelihoods. We also feel powerless in the face of such an event. Swallowed up in this new reality, we find ourselves in our own dry and arid valley, like Ezekiel's vision. Perhaps we even feel like the dry bones, but this isn't the end. Anxiety, hopelessness, despair, and fear don't have to be the last word. Our Lord is here with us in this time and in this place. He's calling on us to have faith and to trust in his unrelenting and boundless power. He's seeking to breathe new life into us and to fill us 
The promise he gave to the people of Israel all those years ago remains the same for us today. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. What greater comfort can we have than that? Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your power and love are beyond anything we can imagine. Lord, we admit that during this time we are worried, we are anxious, we live in uncertain times, and we wonder what's going to happen. Our family, our friends, our neighbors are all on our minds and our hearts constantly. And some of us have the added stress of being isolated and or alone. Some of us feel disconnected and exiled because of the restrictions and the inability to get out. Lord, we long for contact and fellowship with others. However, despite all these things, Lord, you promise that you're here with us. Loving God, send your Holy Spirit upon us that we may feel your transformative power and presence. Lord, through your abounding love and grace, may you bring us new life. May you bring us comfort. May you bring us hope. Heavenly Father, we pray for our world. We pray for our leaders and those making decisions in the face of this pandemic. We pray for all those who are working on the front lines in health care and essential services. We pray for our children and our youth who are unable to go to school and to be with their friends. We pray for all those who've been laid off or who are unable to work. We pray for the vulnerable in our community who are struggling to get by, their situations magnified by our circumstances. We pray for all those who are ill, those who are recovering, those who are undergoing treatments and procedures, those who live in anxiety and fear as they await test results. We lift up to you those who are grieving the loss of loved ones and those who are reeling with the pain of being alone. Lord, there are so many things on our minds and we take this time to lift up to you the people the joys, the circumstances that are in our hearts and our minds this morning. Lord, we ask all these things in Christ's most powerful name. Amen. And this morning, I'd like you to Take time, either now or later in this day, to reflect. What are some of the worries and anxieties that you have? And then I want you to lift those concerns and those worries up to God. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that God be with you. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.